Hey everyone, Todd Moonbounce here, and we're gonna do a quick video on GM Binder. We get lots of questions about this. A lot of you out there want to create a document for your homebrew uh, adventures, etc., and make it look uh, look good, look professional, look fancy, uh, like we do for our Dungeon Jedi Master content, like the Star Wars 5e content, and traditional 5e content. Uh, GM Binder is a fantastic tool for that, an online uh, publisher, if you will, that helps you format that. And I can understand uh, when we bring that up here, the um, hesitancy that, that you get when you see this. Uh, a lot of people feel that it looks like it's a bunch of code and that's something that they're going to have to deal with, but it's really not that bad. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Alrighty, so I've got a brand new document here uh, for GM Binder. And this is what you should see when you open up a new document. Create new, and this is what it'll look like. We got our two panels here, and this is right away everyone says, oh my gosh, this is code. I don't know what to do with this. And really, it's if you dive into it, it's just text with a couple simple tags uh, that add the styling here. So like the, the header fonts, these are all headings, um, adding in the bullet points, paragraphs, things like that. Super easy once you get that figured out. I would definitely recommend right away uh, come in here and you know go through this page see what this says so uh, just look on the left you've got uh, this header at the very top which uses a single pound sign or hashtag uh, so that's going to give us this long header uh, over here the welcome to your next campaign uh, and then two hashtags two pound signs there is going to give a header like this uh, page breaks right here is going to be three um, three hashtags there, three pound signs to get that one. And this is all stuff that uh, if you're familiar with uh, CSS, uh, which is the styling code, uh, you can actually further edit this stuff to make it uh, look fancy. But um, the core uh, core use of this is, is what we're going to go over and then show you how to bring in the code from the Star Wars 5e public theme to utilize that as well. So... First things, definitely go through all this stuff. It talks about, you know, page breaks. What do you got to do for a page break? That's going to be something you'll use a lot. Uh, links, how do you throw that in? Table of contents, images, all this on this sample document when you open this up is right here and is going to be super useful. So check that out. What we are going to do, though, is go ahead and just select all that and get rid of it. Blank slate. Now we have the stylized page. Another thing to do when you come in, you will see this pop up right away when you first you should see this when you first log in um a lot of people are like it's it's acting weird the theme is is being weird so this button right here you want to turn off use default gmb theme turn that off uh share source might be turned on you might want to turn that off as well because then it will keep the source of your document private for the most part so go ahead save that and there's a little bit of a color change here because it went to the original um 5e style uh, that's that's closer to like traditional 5e so we're here to look at uh, you know something for Star Wars 5e so we're gonna touch on that but I'm gonna go ahead and um, look at a few things here so let's uh, let's actually let's first things first get that public theme brought into the document okay so uh, I have the public theme pulled up we're gonna jump over to that right now so this is what you'll see when you grab that link. It is located in the news and releases, new releases and announcements channel on the Star Wars 5e Discord. It's in the pins. It looks like it's currently the first one there. And when you open that up, you'll see this right here. Uh, public theme created by myself. Uh, so what you wanna get is the source here. So this uh, little paper icon, uh, this is what you're after. And this is what I mentioned earlier. When you touch on the uh, source for your document, you won't be able to click on this if the share source is turned off. So but we want to click on that, and you can see there's nothing here because um, there's no content to this. So go ahead, uh, view source, and then you just need to grab everything here. So just click into that, control A to select all, control C to copy, and then come over to your document, and then paste into the left side, control V to paste, and your document will change like so. Go back up to the very top and just hit enter a bunch of times, move that to the bottom. You just get that out of the way and then you're gonna start working up top here. Let's get into it. Let's uh, create, create some content. My first GM binder document. There you go. We've started. You just start typing, that's it. 
let's say we want to make that a header and as i said those hashtags the pound signs that's going to be their different levels basically count it as one two three four five uh, i think is how many are defined so if i simply hit a hashtag in front of that and then put a space you got to have the space in between boom we get that header uh header style right there if we go below that and start typing intro text to my first documents goes here look at that so the uh, style for this is that you get that large uh, first letter forget what that's specifically called from my uh, topography class days but uh, that's what the single hashtag um, the, the h1 header will look like so if we want to maybe bring that out because that also will span the entire width as you can see, it goes across the whole thing, covering both columns. So let's say we don't want to utilize that. Um, show you an example in a moment here too of, of, you know, I don't often use that ourselves. So you generally, we start with like the two H2 or the two hashtags uh, to give us something like that. Okay, so I went and grabbed some uh, Star Wars Ipsum. I'm gonna throw that in here just to get a, a lot of text in here. Uh, so you can see how the paragraph works. So, uh, Paragraph indent here, when you just throw a space on the left side here, we've got that um, that line break, and that's how it is. If we go ahead and put in another break, it'll continue to put in, in those indents for this paragraph. So very great. All right, let's uh, cut a little bit of this here, and let's go ahead and add a new, a second head headline in my document. That might be a little long for the font size, but all right, so... We don't want that to be size one because that's gonna be too wide. Size two, okay. Well, let's see what number three does. All right, uh, for this specific uh, style, it shrinks it a little bit and then puts the underline. So uh, maybe this is a category header, however you wanna utilize that. Go ahead, clean this up here so it's on one line. And then same thing, you just uh, start putting the text below it and it adds to it and you know indents as you need. That's all, that's it. That's right there. You know, we could stop there and, and say, just continue to type. You know those couple commands for the headers, uh, which you, you know, learn from that initial document when you open it of what that is uh, and go from there. So uh, I'm going to bounce over to a, another document. So uh, this is a document I was working on. I was, I was doing some um, space combat rules, uh, adjustments there, home, homebrew rules. But just to show you a few more things that you can do within GM Binder. So, and also I've added a little bit extra styling to this. So the color here, of course, um, is the big thing added in the footer with the DJM logo. Um, you know, all things that you can do, but uh, you know, that involves editing that styling at the end of the document. Uh, if you're starting out, I would just get the styling in there and then just work on putting the information into the document up front. So, so uh, we I have our header here uh, and that's using a, number three header so we've got the underline uh, then I go to a number four down here two and four I believe are the same yes they are the same here so there's no difference between those two um, but you could uh, create differences between all of those uh, this pilot co-pilot here uh, I define that for a number six so that utilizes six hashtags um, that is not in the Star Wars theme uh, the the Star Wars 5e public theme so I that won't work out but just to give me a look where it's a separate uh, little mini header if you will for this paragraph um, so within that I've got some bold text you can select text and control B as in boy to uh, bold that just like you would in in Microsoft Word or any other uh, document program like that otherwise uh, putting two asterisks on each side of the word or words will Hold it. So up here you can see, uh, hopefully you can see that. Maybe not the best on screen. Let me see if I can zoom in here, see how that works. So here we have the word offensive and I've got two asterisks on each side that bolds it. So control B way faster. Um, of course you do have the WYSIWYG type stuff up here, the, the menus to do that as well. So you can do that. Uh, and you can see that on the left side in that code, it does highlight things in different colors to help you uh, tell it apart, uh, which is great. Uh, so there's also all this yellow text. What is that? And we look over here on the right, we can see I did some bullet points. So it indents them. It knows uh, that I've got some bullets here. 
I'm um, gonna shrink this back down to normal size and let's go back to our uh, test document here and throw some of that in. So I'm gonna remove some of this and really it's just, uh, it knows, it picks up, you put in a dash and push space and type. First bullets and it it's adding another bullet. After you add that first one, it knows and it's gonna go ahead and just add that in. So. You don't have to do anything further than that. It just picks it up and, and works. So it's great. Uh, we also have, um, uh, I'll touch on the column break. So column break is, let me zoom that in again so you all can see that hopefully over my head there. Uh, column break, it's just um, slash column break, one word like that. And what that does is it forces the break in the column. So I have this, uh, paragraph up here mechanic if I didn't have that break in it would still exist down here and then it would break the text somewhere else so when you get into this it's like well I don't want that broken up I want it on its own I want it all together so I forced it to break over there just so the formatting looks good so that'll be a lot of things you kind of have to play with and see how that works um, I also have well keeping on that topic actually there's also page break so slash page break and that will add a new page I can go ahead and add one here and same concept, it's gonna add a new page. If you don't add one, it's gonna bleed off the page. You'll see it over here on the right side off the page and you wonder what the hell's going on. So you just need to put in a page break where it makes sense. It'll force the text down to a new page and continue on with your document. So page break like that. I have a quick little table here. This, uh, I'm always gonna just use the, the snippet, which is this little magic wand icon up here. Shooting back to our test document here. I'm going to go up here, and this is another thing to, to dig through and see what's all here. There's a lot of things set up, um, and it has an example of what it is. So they're all going to be styled initially in the example image of traditional 5e, but class block, uh, class block narrow, features, column breaks, which is just going to be a blank uh, column break if you need, or spacer, or the, the column break, which we put in manually. Uh, you can do cover pages. You know, all, all uh, inside cover page, description block, which that's one I will show because uh, you can manually do that pretty easy as well. Um, all sorts of, of great little snippets in here, easy to do. Tables is the one I use the most. Um, so there's a split table if you want a one column, little table like that, or you can do a full size table as well. So uh, go ahead, we're gonna insert that in and boom, it shows up just like that. Make sure it's on both sides for you guys to see. There it is. And then you just go through and edit this and you know edit your numbers. Uh, let's say I want, only want a D6 table. Go ahead and edit. And it's gonna edit live on the right side as you do this. Um, if you wanna add columns to this, so you just have to look, uh, the, the two top parts are probably the most important uh, of this. So uh, just add um, column three and then add a bar, a pipe separator, column four, pipe separator, and you'll see that your table breaks. So we just need to extend this this next part down here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and copy, paste, and it lines up. And you just have to make sure you, ha you have each of those sections to match up your things. The length here doesn't matter. The length here is just if you want for formatting on the left side with your table. So the colons here, uh, they help determine the alignment of the text in here. So these are all center aligned in the column. But let's say I have some text here in this one. All right, let's say I wanna align this to the left. So you just get rid of the colon on the right side and it aligns towards that colon. So you saw it jump over. Or maybe I want it to align the other way. So I go ahead and put that on the other side and it's gonna jump to the other side of the table there. So once again, just a formatting piece um, it looks like it will always default to that center, which you know, is likely is gonna look the best, but just depends on what's in that table. If you're doing long description text, you probably wanna align that to the left uh, as you normally would see. So that's tables for the most part. There's a couple other things that you can get into with that, but we're not gonna cover that in this video at least. Uh, I mentioned doing the, um, the snippet, the little call out text here. So. Let me zoom back in actually and show how this looks. So uh, using the uh, little carrot like this, um, 
greater than, less than symbol, whichever one this one is, to point to the right. And you can see on the right, it does have that box starting. So I'm going to put in a header, some header info here. All out header. And then go ahead. And I do believe I'll have to continue to add these uh, carrots here, these uh, symbols, to continue adding in and body text for the all outs more info further info okay so now you can see what it did it didn't do a, a line break so if we go in and manually add in these here uh still isn't wanting to do that why is it not oh i know why because i have to have a blank line in there it is also though indenting it um so that's another thing to kind of watch for because of the header there the head that my header tags was was just uh, screwing with how that looks so but using the carrots uh, let's go ahead and put one in with a snippet and that'll probably be a little cleaner note block that's the word i was looking for note block or was there description block i'll throw both of those in there to look at each okay so description block is going to be different than the note block and note block all right so i was doing the note block which is going to be styled like this uh, so just put a, a five level H5 a tag there, useful information. You will have to add in these or info. If you want a blank line that uh, you can add in some bullets, something like that. So uh, do some styling there. Uh, if you want this other styled version here, um, same thing. So that's basically it for those two little snippets. So. I think that's honestly it. I think that's all we're going to cover here. Uh, there's a lot of other things you can do with images and, and styling that we're, we're not going to get into because this is really meant to be just basics. Uh, you know, probably spent a little more time on this than I planned uh, just to dive into a few things. But this should absolutely get you up and running uh, to put your information in here. And then once you have it in and you have that in that text in, then you can start learning how to massage it and, and make it look a little better. Uh, you know, with the styling, with the, with the fonts, the colors and images and all that fun stuff and, and really make it look cool and presentable. So thanks uh, very much for checking out this video. If you do have any other questions, uh, please reach out about GM Binder. Uh, find us on the Dungeon Jedi Master Discord or reach out uh, Twitter at Todd Moonbounce. Find us on the Star Wars 5e Discord as well. Uh, lots of great individuals in the community that can help out with this process. I definitely would leave you with don't get overwhelmed by this. It's easy. You can get in and do it yourself. So uh, be sure to check us out, DungeonJediMasters.com, for links to all of our great content, podcasts, YouTubes like this, and, and much more. Thank you very much. We'll see you on the next one. May the Force be with you.